I thought I would make a quick video about how you can install Cheat Engine and use the speed hack feature to speed up the dull parts of FTL while you're just waiting around for stuff to happen. Uh, like for example here on Mantis B we're waiting for our boarding drone to slowly kill this auto ship. Um, could also be stuff like refilling oxygen after a fight because you know you want to use that power elsewhere. Um, waiting for your crew to clone, that kind of stuff. Okay, the first thing we'll do is go to cheatengine.org and click the big download button and that will download the latest version which is Cheat Engine 7.4. Uh, and then you need to go find that file that you've downloaded um, and we're going to install it. But uh, if you do it right now, it's probably not going to work. So you see it's going fine, it's going fine, but when you get to the end, it's going to break. Here we go. You get the scary error message um, and it says uh, operation did not complete successfully because the file contains a virus or potentially unwanted software. And that sounds really scary. It sounds like, you know, Cheat Engine is an evil piece of software. It's not. The reason this is happening is that it does look like a virus. Now, if you think about it, one of the things that a virus might do is um, take control of parts of another program on your computer or try to. That's exactly what Cheat Engine does. It will rewrite memory instructions in other software in order to achieve the things it does. Um, so now we're even going to have another scary error message and I can't even close this. Um, I would have to go into Task Manager and find this program and shut it down. Um, so this is kind of annoying. Um, I'm just going to restart my computer. That's the easiest way to fix this. Okay, so what you need to do before you install the software is open up your antivirus settings. Um, I'm just going. I'm just using um, Windows Defender or whatever the built-in uh, Windows virus checker is, and turn it off. So what's this? Manage settings. Uh, I guess real-time protection. I'm just going to turn it off. Yes, I know what I'm doing, and then try again get to this point um, click next but watch out because they also do want to install some crap um, decline this I don't want it I don't want McAfee shit on my computer no thanks that's like bundleware or whatever the term is that's how they make their money I guess but it's annoying okay so we can launch the application. Uh, what's this? I don't remember this. Uh, I don't care about that. I'm going to click cancel. Okay, now the next thing you should do is immediately turn your antivirus back on and maybe see if you can still run the software. Uh, we've got a shortcut here. Okay. Yes. And will it run? Yeah. Okay, let's run FTL. Now, you see this highlighted button in the top left? Select a process to open, select FTL, you can double click on it, and then go over here and click enable speed hack. And then you have this slider or you can type in values. So if we go to say 10 times, it's running extra fast, except it's kind of not. Apply. You have to click the apply button. Okay. And it's a bit faster, but you may notice it's still not working quite right. We could put this up to 30 times and apply. Still not that much faster. I think it's about double speed. So the reason for this um, is you actually need to go into your graphics card software. Uh, at least this is what works for me. I'll say NVIDIA control panel, yeah. And go to manage 3D settings, program settings, and then select FTL from the drop down list. Scroll down to vertical sync and set it to off. You can change this in the game and it will not have any effect. Uh, you need to force it. At least that's been my experience. You click apply now. 
Um, something to remember is that you will need to do this again every time there is a major Windows update, if you're on Windows. At least that's what I've found. Close it. Run FTL again. And let's open the process. FTL, enable speed hack, apply 30 times speed, and now it's super fast. One last thing I'd recommend is setting up hotkeys. So I'm going to dial this back down to speed one, and I'm going to go into edit settings. Uh, I have two displays, so let's bring that over here, and hotkeys. And oh, this has actually transferred my hotkeys from um, previous install. Um, but I use left bracket for uh, setting one. And I actually want to change that uh, to the minus sign. I've removed the minus and plus shortcuts from FDL because they mess with the text size. It's kind of fiddly setting hotkeys, honestly. There we go. Um, just have to remember that when you're in this field and you press enter, it's going to turn enter into a key which is not what you want so I just press clear press the key that I want and then move my mouse out of it so here are my keys I have uh, setting one is left bracket at some um, normal speed setting two is the minus key that is 10 times speed and setting three uh, is 30 times speed you set that down here of course and that is the right bracket and then I actually have um, left bracket and minus bound to my mouse using my mouse software. So to go back to normal speed, I use uh, mouse wheel down. And to uh, go to fast speed, I use a thumb button. So now we can go back into FTL and um, see like, like this. This is just using the mouse. If I want to go super ultra fast, I have to reach across all the way to the far side of my keyboard and press the crazy speed button because this is kind of dangerously fast. Um, as you can see now. And that's all there is to it. Enjoy using Cheat Engine to speed up your game. Oh, one last thing. You might find yourself in a situation like this where you can train up all of your crew uh, at least in some skills so we could definitely get um, engines piloting and shield skill off this basic laser because we are completely safe in this fight now what I used to do before I had cheat engine was just walk away from the computer go do something else and then I would actually come back and switch my crew around and then go away again and it could take hours um, but I'm a very methodical person uh, that's not the most fun way to do this. So one option is just to super speed like this. Um, and then your crew will level up very rapidly. Um, but there is a better option and I'll show you now. If I already have FTL loaded into Cheat Engine as it were, I can go to this uh, second menu icon, open a cheat table. Uh, and then here is the file which is linked to in the description of the video ftlcrewskills.ct and then you get this right here so let's make this bigger and if you click on a crew box then you can see the skills and I'm going to select piloting through shields like this I'm going to press enter and then just put in a big value like 200 and now go back into game and my first crew has all those skills. And then we can do that for the other crew as well. Make it 400 or something. One thing you might notice sometimes is uh, if you are paused, then uh, the bars may overflow. That doesn't matter, don't worry. Just looks weird. There you see, these massive gold bars. As soon as you unpause, it should correct itself. And that way you can assign crew skills very rapidly without waiting for training. Obviously it's up to you whether you want to do this and uh, certainly for me it's important that I only take the, the uh, crew skills that I would actually get if I didn't have crew training. 
So for example, I would train this human in weapons, um, even though I have to do it manually. So I'll fire a shot, depower the burst laser, wait for it to fire again. Do it again. Uh, you have to make sure that you don't pause too quickly or you'll actually miss the training. Um, but you can see I can level up this crew in this way. Um, so what I will do instead is go and change their weapons value. What I'm not going to do is give weapon skill to anyone else, simply because if I were playing the game without Cheat Engine, I would not have the patience to do it that way. For the most part, the speed hack feature does not change gameplay at all. Uh, but there are a couple of exceptions that I want to draw to your attention so you can watch out for them. Um, one of them is here. So we have a Ion Blast Mark 1 and a Heavy Laser on this enemy. We only have one shield, um, but I've positioned my combat drone so that it's blocking the Ion. Um, and that means that with the drone depowered, this Ion is never going to get through, it just gets blocked. Uh, and that means we could use this as a training ship. However, uh, look what happens if you enable speed hack. Maybe it's not fast enough. Okay, that's interesting. So this is actually working. And the reason it's working, I think, is that the drone is dead center on the arm. It's uh, pretty much perfect this placement. I'm now going to show you what happens with a placement that is slightly off center. Okay, here's an example where the drone is slightly off center and uh, still blocking the ion. Let's see what happens when we speed it up. Uh oh, look, the ion is getting through. And I turn it off, the ion is not getting through. I'm going to speed hack it, and the ion gets through. So you can see this could be really dangerous if you are doing this and you do speed hack training. So what I think is happening here is that uh, collisions, say between an ion blast and a combat drone, or it might be a laser and a missile, that kind of stuff, uh, are very, very precise. There's a small hitbox and there's a small window of time. And I think Cheat Engine is just messing with that slightly. Here's another example. In this case, they have a defense drone Mark II and uh, their ship can't harm us. So you might think, well, maybe we could get a, a crew kill here. We could actually target O2. Um, but the defense drone is stopping us. Now, if you auto fire the Ion Blast 2, will you eventually hit the defense drone and run them out of drones? That's very slow. One way you might think of testing it is to run Cheat Engine, right? So we can just speed it up and see whether it ever makes it to the shield. Oh, look, and it blew up the drone, right? So Cheat Engine proves it. Or does it? What's happening here is, is essentially the same thing. You've got um, very precise uh, targeting, very, a very precise interception point. And if you mess with the timing even slightly, the defense drone can miss uh, when it otherwise wouldn't. So in order to uh, take this crew kill, um, what we'd have to do is prove that we can actually hit the defense drone sometimes uh, on normal speed. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a drone part. Uh, I was hoping to do this without a drone part. But with a drone part, I'll just uh, shoot down all their defense drones. Because it can't react in time. Uh, and this might take me a few tries. I'll just skip to the point where I've, I've destroyed all their drones. Okay, that's pretty good. So now they have, what, two parts left? Uh, so sorry, I don't actually want to say destroyed all their drones. I want to leave them with one drone part left. Oh, that was way too late. All right, so they should now have one drone part left. And what I'm going to do, in fact, is just walk away and uh, leave this running. 
and see if we destroy their drones. So the point of this, of course, um, is to see if I actually didn't need this combat drone, right? Okay. And in fact, we can see that the defense drone is failing. That's interesting. And it's failing quite often. And the reason it's failing is that um, the angle that we have on this shot is bad for its coverage. So what this should mean is that uh, we would eventually shoot it down. There we are. Okay. That's what I wanted to see. We've proven the concept that you can in fact shoot down a defense drone too using ion even and ion is one of the the slower projectiles and this would only apply to um, situations where you can only hit them with um, one projectile at a time kind of thing so that's kind of nice it means that we could just do this speed hack and we never needed to use the defense uh, sorry the combat drone at all And that's a crew kill, which did not require a drone part. One last thing I would suggest is um, maybe don't speed hack during uh, an active fight. What I mean by that is that uh, you know if the enemy weapons are still firing, that kind of thing, um, that might not be a great idea. Um, I'm not completely sure about this, but I remember a long time ago getting a message from Burrito, uh, who is an absolute top level player and uh, was playing a lot of Stealth B, is extremely good at Stealth B, um, of course. And um, he found an example, I believe, where he was speed hacking his way through fights, because uh, he liked to get his glaive beam charging faster. Um, and I think he was speed hacking quite fast. And I believe he had an example where um, an enemy heavy laser fired, which should not have fired. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that, but in any case, personally, what I would do is um, only use speed hacks either when fights are over or when uh, the outcome of the fight is completely determined. Um, so it'd be stuff like, oh, the enemy's O2 is broken, they can't repair it, I'm just going to wait for it to run out, or I could speed hack. Or it's going to be stuff like... Um, the enemy's weapons are completely broken and I'm waiting, maybe and now I'm waiting for my glaive beam to charge. That kind of stuff would be alright. But anything where really precise timing, like a difference of a few frames might make a difference, um, I'd be cautious with. But that's just me personally. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this useful. Enjoy speed hacking. Use your speed hack responsibly.